We're going to see what happens. The internet has been really bad today, but it's a beautiful day outside. Um, what am I doing? Oh, we're streaming. So let's jump on inside of Photoshop. We're going to be working on our cover art for Twisted Tower. And um, again, we're using composites, um, just PNG images from Google, uh, just to sort of create a generic feel of what we want this to look like before I actually go in and illustrate the thing from scratch. Right? Okay, so here's what we've got currently. Come on in, hey David, Honest Dev Games. <laughs> welcome again, welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in guys, come on in. All right, let's see here. What do we got? Okay, so I kind of was uh, thinking it might be pretty cool to behind the tower, maybe. Oh, we need a Ferris wheel. That's what we need. So let's go to Noun Project and grab a Ferris wheel. We may need to go to Google and do it, but. Um, that might work there. That one's kind of cool. Oh, no, there we go. Oh, giving you Castlevania 64 vibes. That's what we want. We love that game. <laughs> I've always dreamed of making Castlevania 64, like a, a variation of it, um, just because I do love that game. I do. I really, really do. So that's a little... Just trying to create a nice sort of, it's almost like the tower is a, is a logo behind this. So. And just move it behind the tower. Drop the opacity down. No, I think we need to go to Google here and type in Ferris wheel PNG. See what we get. You're making these ga making games while watching this. It's such a vibe. That's what Frame Game says. That's awesome. I, I always wondered if it was fun to watch me or listen to me while I make games. Maybe I'll do it one day. Uh, but the truth is, is I'm always with me. That's the that's the problem with uh, consciousness. You can't get away from yourself ever. There's a, there's a couple ways to get away from yourself, but those are usually bad. So don't do those things. Okay, let's see here. We need a really thin one like this. So we're gonna use <clears throat> we're gonna use this one here. And this is something I think that everybody feels really guilty about. They feel like they should they shouldn't be using uh, you know Google Images when they're concepting out their illustration. But that's okay, guys. Don't feel bad about that. Totally fine to do that. And it, uh, like I said, we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it on the Steam page and we're gonna see how it feels. Okay, so that looks pretty good. <sighs> oh, I'm getting tired today, guys. Just need a little bit of a Ferris wheel there. That's all we need. It might feel imbalanced, but if we have something on the left side over there, maybe a character or something, it's gonna look good. Um, what else could we put here? We might be able to add mushrooms. So what about mushrooms? That might do wonders for us. Mushrooms. But we also need to make it look like a horror game. And so that's why I think we're going to put the teddy bear on the left side, sort of grinning at us. Storm clouds. We could definitely use storm clouds in the background as well. That's cool. Bad Tune says, first time watching you live. I almost have watched all of your videos. That's cool. Mist Cloud says it correctly. We shouldn't be that upset about using assets. Um, in this case, we're completely ripping off stuff. So we're gonna create everything from scratch, but this helps me. Can you imagine if I did all this by hand and didn't like it? 
So this is a much more effective and efficient way. I'm a big fan of being effective and efficient with game dev because it's getting increasingly more competitive out there. So you've got to learn how to make games cheap. You just got to do it. Um, got to learn how to make games cheap because some 20 year old out there right now, he's probably learned all of the AI tools. Let's see if I can find a mushroom. Mushroom PNG 3D. 3D. Yeah, like a fairy tale mushroom. And I want them to be 3D. We want to do sort of a tune shaded one though. So let's look for if we could find it. Big fan of composites. That feels very Disney. It'll 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 click when you see it. There you go. There it is. You will know when you see it. That's why I love using this kind of Google searching. It's just so quick. And you just know it and then you go, "Okay, that's kind of what I want it to look like." Right? We'll do a color shift. Take the reds and just move it towards the yellow. Saturate it. There we go. Don't be afraid to use Google. Oh, that's cool. Bad Tune says all of these live streams are just big game dev classes, but not boring at all. Oh, thank you. I am glad. Let's just do one side here. So I'm going to convert all this to a smart object. That makes me happy when you guys say that. I appreciate it. I really do. So all we're going to do is one side here, and we're just going to flip it to the other side. So we'll do that. We're trying to create some framing here so that like the, the teddy bear is like hanging out in the mushrooms like a little hobbit. And we'll blend them towards the background, don't worry. You gotta be super, super duper careful when creating framing framing elements like this because they can really distract if you're not careful. Um, that one can go in front. Oh, let's do it behind. Just enough, just enough to make it look like there's mushrooms here. We don't need to go crazy. There we go something like this. Now, what we're going to do, guys, notice how many of you notice that we're using complementary color here? We are using complementary color. By the way, let's get this white to be more cream. I'm a big fan of limiting our color palette, okay? Uh, the way that you can do this, by the way, limiting, uh, making the white more of a cream, you can actually use the gradient map. And um, no, let's not do that thought that was going to be the case. You, you can definitely just go and do an overlay on top of it, or not an overlay, a, I think it would be, would it be multiply? It might be multiply. Let's see here. Take the cream. It's always nice to add a little bit of cream. And then go to multiply. Yep, there we go. Hello? Okay, and then we're going to take this and just sort of fade it out like that. Save it. And now they match more this creamy vibe, okay? Daniel G has a really good question. So is the theme Disney, Willy Wonka, or Alice in Wonderland? Well, what is Willy Wonka and Disney? You combine those two things, what do you get? Does anybody know? If you take Disney and Willy Wonka and you combine them, What's the intellectual property that you get? Who 
Who can guess it? Nope. Not Bioshock, no. Alice in Wonderland, that's right. So that's that's the uh, the goal here. Alice in Wonderland is is our goal, actually. Disney and Willy Wonka is basically Alice in Wonderland is what that is. Let's bring this down a little bit. Notice how I'm going uh, sort of silhouetted um, as we come towards the camera. Any questions, by the way, guys? Any questions? Any questions as we continue moving on here? I'm going to make that one more faded out in the background here, this one. I'm going to really fade this out so it's nice and... You could even say um, another uh, IP is... Uh, Good grief, Thomas. What's Oz? What? The Wizard of Oz. Man. Uh, yeah, The Wizard of Oz. That's another one. Let's, let's make this one bigger here and then darker. There we go. And then scale it up. All right, so we've got something kind of what we want here. I'm going to take all of this and flip it to the, not the logo, yeah, not my text, and just bring it over here. Anybody have any questions about game dev? Anybody have? Uh, OK, so Double Plus says, good or bad idea. I quit my job right now without any more thought or planning, and I just pray it, pray that I make it as a game dev. No, that is not a good plan. Please do not do that. It's not a good idea. Game dev is very difficult. Most people don't make it. And notice how I'm not grifting. I'm not forcing my career down your throat. Um, I am just telling you that that is a very difficult thing to achieve. I am happy to tell anybody and sell a course to anybody who wants to learn but I'm not going to sit here and promise you that you're going to be a game dev. It is a very, very difficult path to choose. It's not easy at all. So just remember that. It is very, very difficult. Let's add some shadow here. See? Some shadow here as well. And again, we're just creating our little composite here. Just a tiny little composite. I feel like we need some dead trees or some twirling, like, spindly trees, tree branches, sort of going up right here to frame it in. Um, yeah, you only quit your game when you've got the <laughs> proof of concept, by God. Some kind of proof of concept, like a demo that's funded by a publisher um, or a Kickstarter campaign that uh, raised $50,000, $20,000, I don't know. Um, or you've done it before and you made 20 grand off the sales of your, your previous game. Don't just build up your savings and then go full-time indie and just hope that it works. Um, the way you make money as a game developer is not just making a gangbuster game. That's not the only way. There's like six ways you can make money as a game developer. Making your own games like I'm doing right now. This looks really good. Is it just me or does this look really good? I really like this. Let's add a teeth, like, like a scary mouth. So, uh, monster mouth open PNG. I could probably do it with my mouse. Oops. 
like this. So I'm gonna actually do this. So it's sort of like entering the mouth <sighs> of the Twisted Tower. Something like this, taller. Ivan Durrell, baby, Ivan Durrell. Always, always inspired by Ivan Durrell. Ponty Pants released a new game yesterday. Man, Ponty Pants is on fire. Is it that climbing game he did? There are certain developers I'm just so jealous of. They're so talented. And you just, you can't keep up. That's Ponty Pants. Ponty is so good. So good. It's unfair. And I hope him, you know, hope he fails. Just kidding. <laughs> I, think, I, I really do wish him the best. He's going to he's gonna do great with this new game. Um, what's the best way to stay motiv motivated as a game dev? Make a prototype and get it sold. I, I'm just a big fan, guys, of, of getting someone to confirm or deny that what I'm currently spending my time on and, frankly, my money on is worth it. I'm a big fan of that. Um, that's why I like working with publishers. Thomas, you need a publisher to tell you that you're good enough? Yeah, that's just the way I am. I need, I need a constant affirmation that I'm on the right track. That's why I like to live stream, because you guys always give me, because my intuition has not always been correct. And so that's why I like to get affirmation. So the way you do this is you build a prototype. And uh, look, wasn't that cool what I just did there, guys? Look, I love it. That's so cool looking. Um, it needs to be centered. So it needs to be like right here. Um, what was I saying? I like to get affirmation um, to know I'm on the right track. So what you do is you build a demo and then you, you pitch that demo to publishers and just see what they think. I mean, that's, that's really one of the best ways to stay motivated because a publisher is going to say, oh, we really like this. You know? That's a really, really cool game idea. And then it keeps you motivated because they give you money and you go full time and then uh, you don't have to worry about money and you just have fun making games. Right? Let's try and skew this like this. Guys, so far, Mother Effer, this looks good. I think this is a really, really cool front cover. I just, we need character art in here. And I worry, why is it so dark? Oh, we need character art, you know, and it, it's just so vector art. It looks like a 2D game, you know, but again, this is just a composite. FM213 says you like this visual the most. It highlights what the game is. Yeah, I agree. So far, so good, right? Friggin' Ponty Pants. Ponty Pants thinks he's so cool. I'm just kidding. I, I'm so inspired by Pony Pants. Just releasing games so quickly and I should probably make that bigger. That's kind of cool. I like that. And you know, the truth is guys, a lot of illustrations for front covers, they don't match the actual assets of the game, nor do they match the assets of, let's say, the movie, right? It's just, uh, it's, a, it's sort of a metaphor and a personification of what the game is. That's really what the front cover is for. Okay, that's so cool. I love that. We could even do little two eyes. We could do this. It's pretty simple, actually. Pretty straightforward. And it's just things to just to look at and to... to to marvel at. You don't have to see it right away, but it's enough. Um, we need some blood. 
and some we need something to, to say hey this is a horror game storm clouds so i think what we want to do here is just something like this what you guys are gonna freaking love this i love this i've been doing this since i was 15. this kind of illustration style you can do this i love angled clouds i've been always been a fan of angled clouds um, so you do like this so it's, this is just going to be dark Blur, look already thomas you are freaking smart motion blur drop down like that there's potential here to do an inner shadow that's uh, bright yellow normal Yep, what did I freaking tell you? Listen to me, I'm so smart. Watch this. Okay. And then we can also do a gradient overlay that's at the top. <clears throat> Zero. Scale. Love from India from Foxy Studios. That's awesome. Thank you. I've never been to India before, but I'd like to go one day. I think it looks better like that. So all of that self-congratulation I just did, I was wrong. This looks better though. Watch this. Guys, I can't wait to show you this. This is going to be so cool. Are you ready? Here we go. I think this might be the best cover I've done for this game. I think it really communicates what this game is. Again, this is all just a, a, a sketch. It's a composite. Nothing crazy. Blur, motion blur. I need to scale it up a little bit like this and drop it down. I like how it feels almost like stripes. I'm just going to fade out some parts that I don't like. Save. The, the road looks like it's lit. I think it should be red. So we're going to do a little bit of a red road here. Or do we want to do just a light green road? I think that's all we need right there. It looked like it was glowing too much. Well, almost fell over. You know, we also need balloons. I wonder if it would be smart to add balloons instead of mushrooms. Because in the game, I don't think there's ever mushrooms. Uh, maybe the horizon needs a little bit more strength. You know? So do something like this. I'm looking at, but you also don't want it to look like it's morning either. Uh, do we want to add a little bit of a glow behind it? I, th I think that may have hurt it. Let me see here. What about this? I kind of like it that it's not so easy to see. It kind of makes it feel more ominous. This right here, I don't like anymore. Nor do I like this. I just like it behind the tower. A kid holding balloons. Well, balloons in a Joker card will be cool if you want to replace the mushrooms. No, yeah, it's moved away from Bioshock. I think it looked a little bit too much like Bioshock, frankly. And so that's why we're, we're moving away from that. And I, I think this is a better option. It's more unique. Okay, now, 
I feel dead trees. Let's see what we can do here. Just add some dead tree branches, framing it in. I could really go for a, a zen right now. Tree branch. Creepy. PNG. Tim Burton. You like the mushrooms? Maybe we can do mushrooms and balloons, you know? When you feel, ooh, let's see what we can do here. This might help a lot. We're trying to capture exactly what this game is, where we have no shame in using assets. Right now, we wanna know exactly what we're creating. Son of a... Ooh, we got that Tim Burton vibe going. <gasps> we're gonna do a, we're gonna set it to multiply. Then we're gonna put it behind this. Yeah, I feel like this really tells us what it is. What do we think, guys? Does this tell the, us what the game is? You know? I think it really does. Uh. Um, I, I, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking the, these are way more helpful than these. I think both communicate what this game is though. I really do. Um, and, and what's cool guys is we're going to make this look like it's illustrated by Ivan Durhal. So all of this doesn't really match. The style isn't perfect. But we're going to go in there and do all from scratch, and it's going to look like Ivan Earl illustrated it. I don't even know if we need a character in here. You know? I feel like... Let's see what it looks on the um, on Steam. You guys want to see how it looks on Steam? This is a really nice-looking setup, actually. I'm, I'm not even using a light. I just got a window right there. I got rid of my big key light because it was so big and it was sitting in my office. But this is great. I don't think I need lights anymore. I like this. It's soft. I like that. I think I'm on point. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think the character is going to overcomplicate it. I really do. Thorns. Oh, my goodness. Great idea. Hang tight. Let's do it. And, and what we're doing here, guys, is we're just really leaning into tropes. We're saying, okay, what tropes really communicate to people what this game is? And I think this is, I think we're definitely on point. Okay, but let's see how it looks on, on Steam. Let's 
replace the the mushrooms with bushes I don't know about that I mean you can you can combine these you could take that and put it down here and it would feel more like it's a briar patch FedEx yeah this does look like Alice in Wonderland I love it I think I think I don't like the color overlay. I think, yeah, we need to do sort of bright here, actually, and not dark. I could be wrong. The orange helps a lot. It makes it feel like a Halloween um, vibe. So, yeah. D would you guys be shocked if this was a first-person shooter? In its current, in this current simplistic state, would you be shocked if, or would confused if this was a first-person shooter? Yes or no? Yeah, we might need balloons. Okay, so we need to we need to basically make this feel three D. Um. Yeah. Well, it's not a horror game. It's a it's a creepy moody game. So I think we need to Yeah, we're getting 2D vibes here. And that, my friends, is why I feel we need to make it look more realistic and why we need to add in a character art. Okay? But let's just be sure Let's be sure that it looks good as it stands on Steam. So let's go ahead and screenshot Steam. This is, guys, what you're see, what you're observing here is how the pros do it. The marketing people who work with AAA, this is what they do. They paste in a Steam page and they see, okay, how is this gonna look on Steam, right? It's very important that it makes sense on Steam. And oftentimes, context is everything. So you wanna make sure that it makes sense in context. Okay, so if you can't see the base of it, it gets really confusing. So I think it helps to see the whole thing in context. I think I think the overall co composition is is good. I think it would be helpful to have what's her face in the shot. So let's let's do this, okay? Let's save this out, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another version, and I'm going to take these away. The mushrooms are way too vibrant, and this was just something I figured out from the uh, um, just putting it in context for Steam. You just realize, man, there's way too much vibrant um, orange at the bottom there. Context is so, so important. Stick Guy says, what are you working on? We're working on the cover art for Twisted Tower. All right, let's throw in our Charlotte character here. We're gonna put her in the context here. And it's gonna help help us figure out where to actually position. Yeah, this is gonna work. This is gonna work. Okay, so that we can get rid of. Anything on the left side we don't need, okay? The mushrooms, don't know if we need them. This we definitely need. I think it's cool to have it sort of framing it. It really helps. Um, those are the 
thorns. I'm not going to worry about those right now. And I'm looking at my right screen and it shows how it looks small. Yeah, that the, the branches really help, guys. They really do. They act as a framing device. In a way, they're not even really part of the scene. Yeah, the mushrooms we're going to kill for now. And then we're going to take everything except for Charlotte and the branches. And we're going to bring it over. Come on. What's locked? Oh. We're going to have her looking at the logo. So let's group all that together. We don't need that. All of this we're going to group together, including Thomas Brush Presents. And I'm going to put it right there. And I'm going to put. This is just a placeholder for our character art, right? Yeah, it's it, it is the, the the title we need to scale up significantly. I 100% agree. Um, we're going to scale down Charlotte though. She's a little too big. Frankly, we're going to jump inside. There we go, and then we're going to just bring her. Yeah, we need to. Yeah. So we need to increase the canvas size here. 130 by 130. There we go. And then we can put her like this. Save. I do like Charlotte. I think that there, that Charlotte might not be the right character to show. But it's good to have somebody here. She just might need to be smaller, you know? Okay, this guy, we can flip over here. There we go. Scale her up just a tad. There we go. And we'll get that sky. You could even do maybe right here. Yep. And I'm kind of glad that it, it it seems to work okay with the 3D art. And again, we're gonna make this look realistic, um, the entire thing, so. Uh, we can do that and then maybe do a dark over here. We're gonna kill this here. Um, we don't need that, that. Yeah, we need to do something like that. Problem is, is the title is getting click, clipped. We're so close. I think these mushrooms there's potential to get rid of them. I think they're distracting. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know why that. What is this? Hold on. Yeah, all of this stuff here, we need to scale this and move it over. There we go. 
This, I don't know what that is. We're so close, something's off. Is it that? I think it's that. This is too dark over here. That is too dark. Okay. We still need some darkness, but not that much. Yeah, I think we need to frame it in. I think we need to just frame it in. With potentially like a Pan's Labyrinth. Like, let me show you. Um, Pan's Labyrinth cover art. Oh, surely there's the actual artwork. Let's type in Pan's Labyrinth poster. Yeah, so it's sort of got this centrality to it. Man, I really didn't like this movie, I'll be honest with you guys. I did not like this movie. very slow so we could do obviously something like that or we could do it by hand that looks great right there this is too sharp come on Tom what are you doing this is too sharp I know, we're so close yeah that doesn't need to be so sharp so what I'm gonna do is blur it Okay. No, we can't put the character in the background. There's already enough going on in the background. Let's do a Pan's Labyrinth um, style framing device by hand here just to see like what it would look like. It would be some kind of, like, okay, we've got this, right? If we were to take this, duplicate it, and put it into the Illustration R2 here, is that enough? I don't think so. I think that makes it feel like Great Gatsby, and I don't think it makes it feel like Disney. Yeah. So this needs to be more. I like I like the shape, and I like creating centrality to the text. That's why this is this circle so important because it creates centrality. Yeah, it does look like a murder mystery with that, doesn't it? Yeah, you're totally right. And we don't want that. But I like the shape. I, I really do. I think that it, it helps bring this into focus. So we're going to keep this idea of it being a circle. But we're going to then create a sort of spirals coming out of it, almost like it's, it's, it's a bunch of twigs. Convert that to a smart object. Hang tight, everybody. Y'all chill. I'm just kidding. Kind of. Color overlay. We're going to go dark. Like that. And the this fog right here, which we locked, we're going to put that here. Where, wait, wait, wait. Where are you? This goes above it. There we go. Yeah, it's nice. It like it, it puts it into, it gives it centrality, and it needs that because the logo is sort of a central logo. Okay. 
so let's see here. If I do this, I'm just going to get it perfectly centered with the text. Like that. Yeah, I think that's good. And then what we're going to do... Okay. So that generally is the vibe we're going to go for it. And then we're going to add like twigs and stuff. I don't think that's perfectly centered though. And all of these elements are going to need to be reusable. Um, this is close. This is close. Once we get those cool twigs, like uh, like Tim Burton twigs, I think we're all set. Tim Burton branch. Thomas, just do it by hand. Give it a try. It's not easy. We will. I will do it by hand, but I need some kind of reference image. That might be really cool. I'm going to try that. Hmm. No, we need twigs. We are so close, guys. And I don't think it's too difficult to like see. It might be. It might be. But That's the one we wanted, and we were using that one earlier. Let's uh, save it as a PNG and see if it. Oh, yeah, I know. OK, we're going to use it again. We're going to use it again. But we're going to be more strategic about how we use this. So we're going to grab. Uh, let's expand it a little bit. The selection by like two. That way it's not. Okay, we probably need to go a little bit higher. And having some detailing on it's actually gonna help. Although that looks cool too. It's very stylized. So we're gonna just we're gonna go for that. We're gonna do a large one here. We're gonna cut off this. What I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm just going to frame in. Uh, Thomas, what are you doing? Frame it in. So it's just got detailing on it and not worry about the branches right now. So just like stuff like this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I like it. It does feel like Alice in Wonderland, like you're going through the rabbit hole. And I like that. Got to be super careful, though. Oh, yeah, I like that one. There we go. Like that right. Oh, we're so close. It's got to look, it's got to look like a circle, though. So I'm not sure if it does. I think Alice in Wonderland's artwork does this as well, the Alice Madness Returns. We can even add some over on the right side over here, guys. So watch this. I'm going to take this. I'm going to do a color overlay. Um, of green. 
just so I can see it better. And I'm going to select that. Hmm. I think what we want to do is take this black portion here and cut it. And then we're going to take this. and make it look like there's branches behind her. See what that does. Yeah, that's better. There we go. Fishbit says, died, you're a master. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but you misspelled pretty much everything in your sentence. Let's see here. Um, there, there's definitely a, a, a disconnect in terms of style, um, but hopefully we're going to fix that. If we added layering to the vignette, we could definitely, um, hey, I got it. Let's add a little bit of, a few of those curly, curly spirals. I'm <laughs> just kidding, fish bits. I'm just, I'm just messing with you. Yeah, I, I think that we could probably get away with uh, gradient down here. A little bit of a very subtle gradient going behind. I mean, that looks cool too. Um, but yeah, like something like this, I think we just need a little bit more brightness because that's, that's a little difficult to see the tower. Now it's a lot easier to see the tower, but we would also want to sort of fade out this side. I don't know if we need to, I think her coloring might be off. Yeah. I'll tell you this. If we were, if we were going to do a, I'll show you guys, this is kind of cool. If we were to do a gradient map over top of just her, we may be able to achieve that sort of vector look. So if I take this, drop down the opacity. Whoa, it's inverted. There we go. Yep. So it's now a little bit easier to see or see it sort of. Um... There we go. And then this, can we, we can crank up the contrast a little bit. Do you see what I'm doing here, guys? The gradient map is a special tool in your arsenal. Because you can make it look more vectory. And we're just going to make sure that that color matches this. Good. And then we're going to make sure that that color, yeah, good, good. And then the reds, what we're going to do is... Um, Thomas, use your freaking brain. What's going on? Okay, that looks pretty sick, I will say. Guys, are we close? Are we close? Mm. Twisted towel. <laughs> yeah, we need to fix that. You're right. So let's let's move Charlotte. Um, Increase the canvas size here. Save. And then we can just shrink her a little bit. And just move her like that. Okay. She's hard to see because of this super dark um, vignette here. So we're going to take this. all of this vignette here. Come on, it's a mess. Yep, all of that. I wish I could just grab all of those here. Good, okay, I got them all. 
convert it to a smart object. Bring them right here. Goody. I actually don't know if I like that gradient map. Well, no, I think we need it a little bit. I wonder if we can sort of fade it out so that, yeah, we get a little bit of warmth over here. That's cool. And then we could definitely make our eyes pop. I want her eyes to pop. So we could probably do this and this and then this. Um, what was I doing? Oh yeah, this right here, um, the, the sort of vignetted thing here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and over top of it, blend it a little bit more in with the sky right here. Very good. Okay, let's do a vote. We've got 304 people watching, so this is helpful. A lot of smart game developers in the audience. Let's do a vote. Okay, the first vote, what? The first vote is how does this, um, how much do you feel this, there's so many questions, so many polls. Okay, so the first one is one out of 10, um, don't vote yet. How much, how do you feel that, how much does this communicate a horror Disney World game? 10 being a ton, one being none. That's the first question. Tuck Mac. Get it together, Tuck Mac. You gotta listen. We need more horror vibes. Okay. But so far, so good. Yeah, most of you feel like that it communicates that. But we need more horror vibes, huh? How about I just cover her in blood? Like, um. What's her face? Carrie. Yeah, I, I bone broth games. I totally agree. We're gonna fix her eyes. I promise. She, this is all stand in for her. Needs more cowbell. Not thorny enough. Okay, thorns. Good. Lightning in the clouds. I feel like that's adding too much. Okay. The 2D character makes it, what 2D character? The 3D character? Too bright needs more mystery. Okay, okay. Left side feels empty. Okay, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I feel like we need to kill that. All right, so far so good. Now let's go ahead and see how it looks in the context of a Steam page. Okay, here we go. Scale it down. Probably do like that. Okay, so I feel like it needs a little bit more moodiness. When you see it in the context, it really helps. Um, it needs more, it needs to be grimmer, darker. Yeah, uh, it's not fitting also, it's obviously not fitting the Steam artwork, uh, the Steam sizing, um, just because we need to make that, uh, the framing of the thorns smaller. Cool, need more blood, huh? Okie dokie, okie dokie. Close, close, but no cigar. 
I think composition wise, I think we're, we're pretty much there. Uh, communicating the Disney vibe, I think we're there. I think we need more horror. Um, so I think overall, we're going to take this, I'm sorry, we're gonna take one of these and we're going to kill the mask and then we're gonna take just that spiral piece and we're gonna use that maybe once or twice. down there yeah yeah cover art is so so finicky you gotta be so careful with it Almost, guys, almost. Cover art is so finicky. Just gotta be careful. Yeah, I totally agree about the lighting. Um, she, yeah, her lighting is just off. But we're close, we're close. Mm. Ugh. Yeah, she's a bit like uh She needs like more contrast or something. I'm not quite sure why it feels off with her. But it doesn't even matter. We're not going to use her. She's just a stand-in. I kind of feel why is that logo? Oh yeah, we need it to be more vibrant. It's so dark, why? I think it's because this, there's something in the way, it's this. Look at that, it's in the way of everything. What is that even? That was only for this. Golly. We're getting there. I'm gonna take these. What are we trying to do, guys? Remember the remember the goal of this. To communicate what the game is. That's about it. And once we've communicated what the game is, then we worry about lighting and color and, and, and doing it all from scratch, blah blah blah. But you just want to be able to communicate instantly what this game is. No! I hate when that happens. Stop it. And all this crap here. This stuff right here, we're going to convert it to a smart object. Goody. Then I'm going to fill in over top of it sort of a bloom effect. First things first, just do this. Hmm. 
we're gonna do this. That first. Then we're gonna go over top. Whoa, what am I doing? I forgot how to, <laughs> Thomas. Um, and then we're gonna do this here. Fade it in so it looks like it's blooming. Yeah, that's much better. Okay. We could even maybe fade that out there just a little bit. This right here. Not too much. It's a little distracting. Good. Okay. This is the idea. This is the idea. Yeah, I totally agree, Nate Wins. I totally agree. It does feel point and clicky. I think you're right. It's because she looks mysterious, you know? It's it's her. Whew. Man, I've had so much trouble with this. Yeah, we need more guns, don't we? We need uh, one of the. We need the main character holding a gun. That's what we need. Gotta tell people what this game is with a single thumbnail. What is that? Mm. I actually like seeing the edges there. That might work actually. Let's let's throw this in there. Oh, we're getting there. Yeah, we're close, guys. Okay, that, that kind of works. It kind of works. <laughs> All right, so um, let's uh, do this crop here. It's you're totally right about it feeling like Great Gatsby, um, and I think that's just because of the of of Charlotte, right? So I think what we need to do is go ahead and try and throw in a different character and maybe that'll solve our problem, okay? So let's go into, uh, I do like that, that the, the twigs. I, I think that's really cool. Um, this one might be a little much right here. So what I'm gonna do is actually cut some off. Yeah. Like that. No, we needed that one apparently. I don't know why. Yeah, she doesn't belong there. Um, also, I feel like we need to fade out the tower a little bit more towards the top. Maybe just make it more green. And then the flag as well. I 
I think you're right. I think a scary monster. We want to we want to put him there. That look look. Let's be for real though. This is kind of cool, you know, just in and of itself. I don't know if we need. We might not need anything else. So here's an example, right? If I take this, don't you do that? If I do this and just like that. If we put it onto the Steam page, there's a lot of potential there. It's not perfect by any means, but um, a lot of potential there. Close, close. Yeah, we're close, guys. I just need to see it with the right color scheme. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's definitely an er eeriness to just just seeing the tower behind these trees. I think that could be all we need. I might need to really dig into, like, really illustrate this thing so that it doesn't look like a 2D game, but it looks like a first-person shooter. We may have to get a 3D artist to do this. Yeah. There's potential here to use my 3D version of the logo. That may be, that may, maybe, I don't know, maybe that'll give it the vibes we need. I've never dedicated this much time to cover art before. By the way, guys, those of you who are just joining us, just remember if you do want to support the channel and also support Blackthorn Prod, but more importantly, support um, your future. If you're interested in making an investment in a massive program where you go from zero to 100 and learn how to make games full-time, I'm talking making your own indie games full-time. Um, if you want to do that, check out Game Dev Hero. It's taught by people who are actually in the trenches making games for a living. Um, but Thomas, you're a YouTuber. Mm, no, I'm, I'm a lot of things. But I'm also, I'm also currently published by 3D Realms, um, and they they fund my team as we continue to make Twisted Tower, and that's cool um, because if you want to learn from somebody who's actually making games for publishers and releases their own commercial games, check out Game Dev Hero. It's going to teach you the business side, the marketing side, how to make money, how to make six figures with just a demo, how to make ten different game types, which is so helpful because. It's really important to understand how to make different genres of games. So go ahead and, and click click below. Um, thanks for listening to the ad read, guys. But let's go ahead and jump right back into um, this logo here. And I want to see what does it look like with the color overlay gone. I, I have a theory that I'm just going to know. I'm going to know. You know, I'm just gonna know. I think we're close, guys. I really do. I think we're close. Man, we're so close. I think that looks pretty cool. And it can look cool all day, but if it's not legible and it's not communicating properly what the game is, you lose. So it doesn't matter if it's cool. What matters is does it make sense? Is it communicating the game's idea?
Is it the blood that makes it hard to read? Okay. Let us take a look and see if we can get rid of the blood. This thing is massive. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Keep opening it up. There we go. So we can get rid of the blood here. Was it the blood that was causing problems for you guys? Haunted Harry Potter vibes? I'll take it. No! <laughs> oh, Thomas. I think it is hard to read, but let's do this. Um, let's save this as R3. Let me go with my gut here. I think you guys are right. It's hard to read, but hang tight. So I just want this side of the tree branches. So I'm actually going to convert the whole thing to a smart object and grab this as well. I'm just going to merge all of the layers together. And I'm going to kill this. And I'm going to put that on this side. Maybe even flip it vertically. Kill this. We are close. I feel, I feel like we're close. And then the background, I'm just gonna go ahead and crop it actually. It's not perfect, the, the size isn't perfect. But let's see if that looks good. Well, we can make it pop, you know, we can make it more vignetted and dark. So, uh, again, we're going to bring this back to Photoshop, or I'm sorry, uh, Steam. We're going to look inside of Steam to see how it feels. Hard to read, hard to read, yeah. Let's keep the, let's remove the blood. Let's remove the blood. Um, I like I like the shininess of it. And to me, it, it really gives it that Disney feel, um, which is we really need to emphasize that as much as we can. So what we're gonna do is, um, let's take a look at Alice Madness Returns. The logo for Alice Madness Returns, there's a little bit of blood, just a little bit of blood, right? This is a great reference point. Um, so there's a little bit of blood, but not too much. So what we could do is we could actually go in and move a lot of the blood. So it's not so aggressive. Yeah. Just so it's those little drips that are actually the blood, you know? Um, yeah, that one we need to move up. We'll just kill that one. This one, could probably move that one up a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then the rest I don't think we need. What is this one? Don't need that. You can probably move that one up a little bit. All right, that might help a lot. You guys are really helping me so much right now. I really appreciate it. We're gonna do this just for now and see how it feels. Yeah. We're close, guys. I feel it, I feel like we're close. You liked the road going to the castle, if you can bring it back. Oh, did, is it, is it, uh, you can't see it? Let's, let's pull it up. Good, good, thank you so much for saying that. Um, Something like that, and then this goes down. Yeah, me too, I liked it too. Good good catch, I didn't realize I had gotten rid of that on accident. Mother. 
what in the world? There's so many layers. Uh, what is that? And then what is, oh man, so many layers. <laughs> I'm so confused. But yeah, the road is, is pretty cool. Uh, we definitely want that. I don't know where the F that line is. Oh, it's so annoying. Okay, it's that right there. She's gonna literally, oh my goodness me. Bing! There we go, what's that? We'll just kill that. Guys, I feel, I feel like we're close, but I don't know if the game is being communicated. Yeah, it's like, um, I mean, people will know it's a first person shooter um, because they'll watch the trailer, but you don't want to rely on that, you know? Close, close. What would happen if we had a little teddy bear like peeking up, you know, um, like right here or something? Bullet holes? Yeah, maybe. Text needs to stand out more. I, I tend to agree with that. Um, a drop shadow could do it. That. Uh, the branches are definitely too sparse. I don't know if that's the right, if I agree with that. Let's see here. Next thing we want to do is try and darken the background but increase the contrast, which I know sounds strange, but we're going to try that. We're going to do this. Desaturate, darken, crank the contrast. And we'll do this. I do read the chat kicks. I just can't answer all the questions. Mm. 
Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think I need to take a break. Guys, this was so, so fun. Thanks for hanging out. It was really, I mean, I, you guys offered up some incredible, incredible ideas. Um, it was really, really helpful to me. But I need to take a break. My my brain, my eyes are getting lost in the art. Check out Game Dev Hero below if you want to learn how to make money as a game developer. Not only that, how to make 10 unique games. This is a premium program. So this is, well, in my opinion, best of the best because it's me and Blackthorn Prod partnering together to offer up a single premium plan for you to go from zero all the way to 100 to learn how to make games. It's for real. It's taught by people who are actually in the trenches making games and they do it full time. Thomas, you're a YouTuber. I'm also a game developer and I'm also published by 3D Realms right now. I run multiple businesses, just so you're aware. Um, and so yeah, if you're, if you're interested in learning from actual game developers, check out the link below. It's pretty awesome. Ends in 27 days. Talk to you guys later. Take it easy, cheers. Get over here. Get down. Hey, thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below, it's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days and actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which was really cool. This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me. Hit subscribe. And also, this is important. Hit that notification bell. Here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game and let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have. And you might just show up. Your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye. I love you too.